Welcome the Young Minds of Class 8. I'm Nancy Bora, your digital mentor. Today, we will be starting with Unit 2, Agriculture, Chapter 5, Major Crops for Agricultural Development. So, let's get the ball rolling. Today, we are going to learn about agriculture, types of agriculture, development of agriculture, case study about farm in the USA, factors affecting crop cultivation, major crops, and agricultural development in India. First, let us start with some geographical terms. Food crops. Crops grown for human consumption as food are known as food crops. Paddy transplantation. The process of uprooting the saplings of paddy and planting them into fields with plenty of water so that they may grow into mature plants and bear seeds. CIS. Commonwealth of independent state comprising countries which were part of the former USSR. The regional grouping was founded on 8 December 1991 by the Republic of Belarus, the Russian Federation and UK. Beverage crop. Crop that provide a type of drink. Fiber crop. Crop that are used to make textiles. Drought animals. Animals used for carrying heavy loads. And bushel. A unit of volume in the US customary system used in the measurement of dry grains equal to 35.24 liters of 1.2445 cubic feet. Now, let's start with agriculture. The word agriculture is derived from Latin words agar means soil and culture means cultivation or to culture. Thus, agriculture is the cultivation of animals, plants, fungi and other life forms for food, fiber and other products that used to sustain life. Agriculture includes the rearing of livestock such as cattle, sheep, goats, horses, camels, chickens, ducks and even fishes, silkworms and honeybees. Agriculture is an activity which mainly includes growing crops, fruits, vegetables and flowers. In the world, 50% of people are engaged in the agricultural activities. Two-thirds of Indian population is still dependent on agriculture. Here is an image of agriculture and irrigation. Agricultural land is the most basic of all resources as it provides food, clothing and shelter to humans. It supplies raw material to the industries. Agriculture formed the basis of the ancient civilizations. With growing population, ways and means were devised to increase the agriculture productivity of land. Irrigation facilities, better seeds, Fertilizers and improved methods of farming were introduced to increase the crop yield. The use of power allowed the introduction of modern machinery in agricultural operation. Farm mechanization not only increased crop productivity, also brought more areas under agriculture. It created a crop surplus so that the international trade in agricultural crops became possible. The use of new scientific methods in farming and storage further enhanced the profitability of agricultural products. Now, let's talk about factors influencing crop cultivation. The land on which crops are given is known as arable land. Favorable topography, climate and soil are important factors which determine what kind of crop can be grown. At present, mechanization has also influenced agriculture. Now, let's connect to geography for a bit. The practice of agriculture started long back in about 10,000 BCE, when humans started to grow plants and domesticate animals. First factor is climate and topography. The climate of place, particularly temperature and rainfall, influence crop cultivation. Example, tropical crops like rice and sugarcane require higher temperature and wheat requires moderate temperature. The amount of rainfall influences crop cultivation because different crops require different amounts of water. Example, Rice requires more water than jawar and bajra. So, rice is grown in wet areas and jawar and bajra can be grown in dry areas. Here is an image of tea that is grown only on the mountain slopes. Favorable topography of soil is also vital for agricultural activity for growing crops. Plains with fertile areas and river deltas are most suitable for growing of crops. Tea can be grown on the mountain slope where terrace farming is also possible. Second is techniques and implements. After the introduction of modern techniques and implements, crop yield has increased manifold. The construction of multi-purpose projects, canals, dams and reservoirs has improved irrigation facilities. 
techniques like crop rotation and multiple cropping enable the farmer to grow crops continuously. Storage facilities help in saving the grains from the rodents and rain. Here is an image of tractors that are widely used in farming. Now, let's talk about types of agriculture. On the basis of land available for cultivation, agriculture can be intensive on a small piece of land or extensive on a large farm. On the basis of aim of cultivation, there are two types of agriculture, subsistence and commercial. We will look at these two categories in detail. First is subsistence agriculture. Agriculture done to support the family of the farmer and not for commercial use is called subsistence agriculture. The type of agriculture is common in the tropical lowlands. It is practiced by farmers on self-sufficient basis and they grow food crops only for themselves and their families. Farms are very small in size and yields are low. They use primitive methods of cultivation. Natural menus like domestic waste and animal dung are used supplemented with some chemical fertilizers. Very few farm animals are kept. Farmers are generally poor. Subsistent agriculture can be sedentary. That is practice in one place or shifting that is moving from place to place. Here is an image of subsistence farming that is done with the help of simple tools. Now first is shifting cultivation. It is the primitive method of farming. It is mainly practiced in tropical forest of the Amazon Basin, Congo Basin, Southeast Asia and Northeastern states of India. They are known by different names in different countries of the world like Juming in India, Milpa in Mexico, Roca in Brazil and Ladang in Malaysia. In this type of agriculture, trees are cut and burned to clear the land where cultivation is done. The ash forms the manure for the crops. Crops like maize, cassava, yam, potatoes are grown. After 2-3 years, when the soil loses its fertility, they shift to another piece of land. Shifting cultivation is also known as bush and fallow agriculture and slash and burn agriculture. Due to its harmful effects on the environment, government all over the world discourage this system of agriculture. Here is an image of shifting cultivation and how it is harmful for the environment. Next is nomadic herding. This is an extensive form of animal grazing on natural pastures. Different types of animals like cattle, sheep, goats, camels and yaks are reared de depending on the climate and natural vegetation of the area. The herders move from one place to another in search of fodder and water supply. Nomadic herding is confined to sparsely populated parts of the world where natural vegetation is mainly grass. It is practiced in the parts of West and Central Asia, Northern Eurasia, East and Southwest Africa and Sahara Desert. However, the change to a settled lifestyle has reduced the importance of nomadic herding these days. The Kyrgyz and the Kazakhs of Central Asia, Bedouins and Tuars of Sahara Desert, the Masias of East Africa and Gaddis and Bakarwals of the Himalayan region in India are some of the important animal herders. Here is an image of nomadic tribes. Next up, we have commercial agriculture. Unlike intensive subsistence agriculture, commercial agricultural practices involve cultivation of a single crop over large area in a huge farm covering thousands of acres. These large extensive farms are totally mechanized in their operations, huge surpluses for sale in the large markets. Though yield practice is small, total production is high. The farmer with his family carries out all agricultural activities with help of modern machinery such as combined harvesters. The main purpose of growing crops extensively is for sale, which is why the farmers are very wealthy, high level of prosperity. Temperate grasslands of the world such as the prairies, steepies, pampas and downs have become the granaries of the world as they grow wheat and corn extensively on a commercial scale in these large farms. We have first extensive grain farming. This is a system in which large area of land is used but the amount of capital and labor used is small compared to the size of the land. The yield is low per unit area of land and so large tracts of land are required to produce grain in large quantities. Often the work is highly mechanized to obtain higher output. Tractors combined with harvesters, trucks, diesel pumps and other equipments are commonly used. 
Generally, a simple crop is grown throughout the year. Grain farming in North America, Europe, Mexico and Russia is an example of extensive agriculture with big farms and high levels of mechanization. Then we have pastoral farming. It is the commercial rearing of livestock like cattle, sheep and goats for meat, milk, wool, hides and various other products. It is practiced in the temperate grasslands. The prairies of the USA, the pampas of Argentina, the wild of South Africa, the steppes of Eurasia and the downs of Australia. Here is an image of a ranch. The animals are kept in permanent ranches. They are fed on natural grasses and fodder crops like alfalfa and lucerne. The, the ranches are scientifically managed. The animals are well looked after. Pastoral farming is highly specialized and there are separate departments for every stage of animal production. First, we have dairy farming. Cattle rearing, particularly rearing of milk cows to meet the demand of milk and milk products in urban area is referred to as dairy farming. It is an advanced type of farming involving use of scientific methods. The three largest areas in the world where dairy farming is practiced in intensive form are North America, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, Denmark and the Netherlands are best known for dairy producers. In India, dairy farming has been organized on a sound footing in Gujarat through dairy cooperatives. Central Fodder Research Institute, Jhansi and National Dairy Forest Institute, Karnal have been conducting researches on dairy development. While the most important milch animal is cow, in other parts of the world, it is buffalo in India. Here is an image of dairy farm. Next, we have plantation agriculture. Plantation agriculture is a type of commercial agriculture which is export oriented. This means that crops are grown to sell often in, often in distant markets rather than in local markets. In this kind of farming, the farms are very huge. Large amounts of labor and capital are required. Even the processing of the product is done on the farm or nearby factories. There is a good transportation network in the sea which enables the goods to be transported immediately. Crops which are grown are tea, coffee, sugarcane, cashew, rubber, banana or cotton. The tropical regions of the world are known to practice this type of farming. Major plantations of rubber are done in Malaysia while coffee plantations are found in Brazil. India and Sri Lanka are both known for their tea plantation. Here is an image of plantation. Next, we have intensive commercial farming. It is practiced as horticulture, that is, the intensive production of vegetables, fruits, flowers on small plots of land as done in the most of Europe. Fruit farming in particular has developed in all parts of the world as a special branch of agriculture, especially after quick transportation and improved methods of fruit preservation were available. Viticulture, that is, cultivation of grapes is widely practiced in France. Italy and Spain, in Europe and other Mediterranean countries. The well-irrigated lands of California and USA produce olives, grapes, figs, oranges, prunes and apricots commercially for canning, juice and wine production. Here is an image of viticulture. Next, we have mixed farming. It is that type of agriculture in which equal importance is given to livestock as well as cultivation of crops. In other words, Food and fodder crops are given equal importance. It is practiced in USA, Western Europe, Russia, etc. Mixed type of farming is also practiced on small scale in some parts of the India like Northwest Punjab. Under the mixed farming, farms may be large or small. The proportion of land devoted for crops and for rearing varies according to the location of the farms, the soil fertility, market demand and prices of crops and animal products. Here is an image of mixed farming. Now let's talk about small scale commercial farming. First we have horticulture. This is the growing of fruits and flowers on small plots of land for sale. Generally these are located close to cities and towns where, where these are sold in markets. The closeness to the markets also prevents these perishable goods from going waste. Next we have market gardening. This is the form of vegetable farming. Vegetables are grown in small market gardens close to the local markets. It is also known as truck farming as trucks transport the vegetables to the towns and cities close by. 
These farms are characterized by their small size and great diversity of crops. Usually, the market gardens occupy some vacant land in the city or town and supply fresh produce to the local people. Here is an image of horticulture and market gardening. Now, let's talk about major crops. A great variety of crops are grown all over the world. They are classified as food crops and commercial crops. Every crop needs a particular set of climatic condition as it cannot be grown easily in other climatic regions. The geographical requirements and world distribution of some major crops are discussed below. But first, let's connect to geography again. Sugar cane originated in Eastern Asia and rubber trees are native to the Amazon rainforest. First, let's talk about food crops. Food crops are crops that form the basic food of people. Food crops include chiefly cereal grains like wheat, rice, corn that is maize and millets. When any such crop forms the chief food of an area, it is known as the staple crop. In India, pulses and oil seed also form part of major food crops. Some of the important crops are as given below. First is rice. Rice is the chief food crop of the world. Nearly half of the population of the world depends upon it as their staple diet. Now, let's talk about the condition for the growth of rice. First is temperature. It requires a uniform temperature of about 25 degrees Celsius during the growing season. Rainfall, it grows well in areas having 100 to 200 centimeter of annual rainfall and it can be also grown in those regions where assured irrigation is available. Then we have soil. Rice can be grown in a variety of soils but loamy or clay soils are preferred because they have the ability to contain water for a long time. Then we have area of production. China leads in the production of rice followed by India, Japan, Sri Lanka and Egypt. In India, rice is grown in West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Assam, Odisha, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and Punjab. Next, we have trade. Only good quality rice like the Indian Basmati has entered international trade. Most of the produce is used for within the country. Next up, we have wheat. Wheat is the staple food in the mid-latitudes and dry subtropical regions. Countries with really cold winters such as Canada grow wheat in spring while tropical countries such as India grow winter wheat. It is a Rabi crop here. So you have two main types of wheat, spring wheat and winter wheat. Let's talk about conditions for the growth of wheat. First, we have temperature. It requires 10 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius during the growing season and 15 degrees Celsius to 28 degrees Celsius while at the time of ripening. Rainfall. It grows well in areas having 100 to 200 centimeters of annual rainfall. It can also be grown in those regions where assured irrigation is available. Next, we have areas of production. Wheat is extensively grown in the USA, Canada, Russia, Argentina, Ukraine, Australia and India. In our country, Punjab, Haryana, Jammu and Western Uttar Pradesh are the major wheat producing areas. Next, we have maize. Corn or maize is an important food crop used to make flour and porridge. It is also used as fodder. It is known as corn in the USA and makka in India. Let's talk about condition for the growth of maize. First is temperature. It requires 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. Rainfall. It requires rainfall between 50 to 100 centimeter. If you talk about areas of production, it includes USA, China, Brazil, Mexico, France and Argentina are the major producer of maize. In India, it is grown in Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka and Bihar. USA is the larger producer of maize in the world. Here is an image of maize. Next, we have millets. Millets are coarse grains which are used both as food grain and fodder in India and Africa. Four crops, Jawar, Bajra, Ragi and Sorghum form a group known as millets. Conditions for growth of millets are Temperature should be between, between 20 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Celsius. Rainfall should be between 20 and 100 cm. If we talk about areas of production, then millets are produced mainly in India, Nigeria, Niger and China. India is the largest producer of millets in the world. 
Here is an image of Bajra plantation. Now let's talk about commercial crops. Commercial crops are grown for supply to an industry. The sale of the crops bring ready cash for the farmers. So they are also called as cash crops. Cotton, jute, tea, coffee, sugar cane and sugar beet are also called industrial crops. First, let's talk about cotton. Cotton is the most important fiber crop of the world. It is a universal fiber. It is used to make many types of fabrics. Conditions for growth are temperature that should be between 22 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. Rainfall should be average rainfall of 60 to 100 centimeter suits the plant. Another condition required is 210 frost free days in a year. Next we have area of production. The leading producers are China, the USA, India, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, Brazil and Turkey. In India, the leading cotton producing states are Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab and Haryana. Next we have jute. Jute is considered as a golden fiber in Indian subcontinent. It is a long, soft, shiny fiber that resists stretching. It is used for making packing materials like carpets, ropes, bags, mats and many other products. Let's talk about conditions for the growth of jute. First we have relief. Jute grows well on the well-drained fertile soil in the flood plains where the soils are renewed almost every year. Next we have temperature. It should be between 22 degrees Celsius and 27 degrees Celsius. Then we have rainfall. Rainfall should be 150 centimeter per year. Next we have soil. It grows well in alluvial soil of delta as well as in loamy soils. Next we have areas of production. Major areas of cultivation are in India, Bangladesh and China. These three countries account for 85% of world's total jute production. Jute is grown best in Ganga Brahmaputra Delta region. Next, let's talk about tea. Tea is world's most favorable beverage crop. There are many different varieties of tea. Did you know that the taste of the tea depends on the environment where it was grown and also on the tea mark in the, and also on the tea maker who decided when and how the leaves were plugged. Now, here is an image of tea plantation and let's connect to geography. In India, the tea plant was introduced by a British officer Robert Bruce in Assam in 1829. Now, let's talk about conditions for the growth of tea. First, we have temperature. It should be between 30 degrees Celsius to 30, average 25 degrees Celsius is most suitable. Rainfall. It requires 125 to 250 centimeter of rainfall. Next, we have soil. The plant required a light loamy soil with a porous subsoil that allows the water to drain away. Hill slopes are preferred for tea plantation because water can draw away easily. Next, we have area of production. India is the major producer of tea in the world, followed by China, Sri Lanka, Kenya, Japan, Indonesia and Bangladesh. Next, let's talk about coffee. The coffee plant was introduced in India by the British. The two types of coffee plants are Arabica or Mocha and Coffee Robusta. Arabica is a superior quality and accounts for 90% of world's total coffee production. Here is an image of coffee plantation. Now let's talk about condition for the growth of coffee. Temperature. It requires temperature ranging from 15 to 30 degrees Celsius. If you talk about rainfall, then 150 to 250 centimeter of rain is needed for the growth of the coffee plant. Next, we have areas of production. Chief producing countries are Brazil and Colombia. In India, it is produced on the slope of Western Ghats in Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Next, we have sugar cane. Sugar cane is a main source of sugar. It is a tropical grass with a juicy stern that yields a sugary juice. It is an annual crop because it takes a year to be grown and harvested. It is grown from the cuttings and not from the seeds. Its plant attains a height up to 1 to 3 meters. Now, let's talk about conditions for the growth of sugar cane. First, we have temperature. It should be 25 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. Then, we have rainfall that is 75 to 150 centimeter. Then, we have relief. Sugar cane grows well in loamy and well-drained soil of plains. If we talk about area of production, then Brazil is the leading producer of sugar cane, followed by India and China. 
are the major producers are Thailand, Pakistan, Mexico, Colombia and Australia. In India, the leading sugarcane producing states are Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Bihar, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Punjab and Haryana. Now, let's talk about development of agriculture. Agricultural development means improvement in agriculture so as to increase farm production. It is essential for improving food security, that is, availability of food and access to it. We say there is food security when enough food for all the people is available at all times and all the people have access to it. Some of the ways in which farm production can be increased are bringing more land under cultivation, improving irrigation and using scientific farming methods, modern farm machines, high yielding varieties of seed and good fertilizers and pesticides. Now let's talk about agricultural development in India. Agriculture is the mainstay of the Indian economy. About 70% of the Indian population is either directly or indirectly engaged in farming. A wide variety of crops are grown in India including food grains as well as raw material for many agro-based industry. India's climate, extensive level plains, perennial rivers and fertile soil helps to sustain helps to sustain different varieties of crops. Agriculture in India is mainly of intensive subsistence type, although over the past few decades there has been a visible shift towards commercial farming. Here is an image of Indian farmers still using primitive types of tools. Now let's connect to geography once again. The green revolution is a term used to describe the spectacular increase in the production of food grains in India that started in the 1968. Dr. Norman Borlung, an American agronomist, had designed the new package technology in agriculture. He is therefore aptly called the father of the green revolution. Now let's talk about problems in Indian agriculture. Agriculture productivity in India is low due to a number of factors. First, lack of assured and timely water supply through irrigation, small and uneconomic land holdings, unhacked, uh, unhacked soil erosion removes fertile topsoil, use of low quality seeds, floods and drought damage crops, inadequate storage facilities for crops in many parts of the country results in low agricultural productivity. Now, let's connect to geography once again. Zamindari system. The zamindari system was introduced in the early British period. The system was a way of collecting taxes from peasants. Let's talk about agricultural reforms. After independence, Indian agriculture, Indian agriculture has undergone major changes. The government has made agricultural development as one of its major priorities under the five-year plans. The food shortage was a chronic problem of our country. To check the problem of food storage, the government has taken several steps. Some of these are abolition of zamindari system, development of various irrigation projects, development of agricultural machinery, provision of loans from banks and cooperatives. The above steps helped India in achieving self-sufficiency in food production. The government also started the Intensive Agricultural Development Program IADP in 1961 and it paved the way for the adoption of Green Revolution in India. The introduction of high yielding varieties of seed was the most important measure of Green Revolution. Farmers were also encouraged to use chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Agricultural universities and research centers were set up to find ways of increasing productivity Programs were launched to make farmers aware of the benefits of modern farming techniques. Loans were made available to farmers through banks and cooperative societies. Efforts were made to provide better infrastructure in rural areas. Most roads were constructed to link rural areas to market centers and more villages were electrified. Now, let's dive into a case study about farm in the USA. The USA in North America is the fourth largest country in the world. Its total population is little more than 30 crores. People from different countries of Europe came here in search of work and wealth. They found that the central part of USA is a vast treeless plain where all grasses grow. There is Midwest of USA and the immigrants called the region as prairies. Today, USA is a rich and developed country and has been blessed by the nature with, with vast fertile plains and extensive grasslands. 
The prairies of the USA are located in the interior of continent and experience an extreme type of climate. Here, the winters are generally cold and summers are hot. There is a limited amount of rainfall during the summer season. Here is an image of harvesting by machines. We have selected a farm in the Midwest region, which is about 400 hectares in the area. It is not the largest of them as most of farms in the US are very large. Samuel is the owner of the farm and lives with his family on the farm itself. The geographical condition such as relief on the land, climate condition etc. favor the cultivation of a large variety of crops such as corn, soya bean, wheat and sugar beet. But Samuel gives preference to the cultivation of maize which is called corn in the USA over other crops. Samuel's Farms is very large farm when compared to the above average land holding in India. Due to its size, most of the farm work such as plowing, harvesting and threshing is done with the help of machines. He is very particular about the fertility of the soil. He asks the soil laboratories to test and advise about type and quantity of fertilizer to be used so that the nutritional level of soil can be maintained. Contour, plowing and rotation of crops are regularly practiced. Here is an image of large land holdings. Samuel has purchased a variety of machines to do the farm work such as tractors, seed drills, leverers, combined harvester and thresher. He maintains an independent workshop on the farmhouse. There are independent sheds of machine, livestock, fodder etc. The yield per acre is low but per worker is very high. The farmer earns enough money to maintain a high standard of living. So students, let's wrap up the session and see what we have learned so far. Agriculture is the cultivation of animals, plants, fungi and other life forms for food and other products to sustain life. The types of farming can normally be divided into two main categories, subsistence agriculture and commercial agriculture. Agriculture done to support the family of the farmer and not for commercial use is called subsistence agriculture. Subsistence agriculture can be sedentary or shifting. Commercial agriculture involves specialized farming with the aim of selling produce in market to earn maximum profit. This includes extensive commercial that is grain farming, pastoral farming, plantation agriculture and intensive commercial that is horticulture, viticulture etc. farming and mixed farming. Commercial crops such as cotton, jute, tea, coffee and sugar cane are mainly produced for supply to respective industries. Agriculture is being developed in India with modern methods of agriculture. Agriculture is highly developed in the USA. Thank you student that was all for the class. I hope that you have learned something. We will meet again in the next class.